Hi everyone, and welcome to another rapid game playthrough here on chess.com. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a good opponent. See if we get a, a pretty good game going here. All right, so we game here against Prince Intelligent, rated 1801. We're starting off with a rating of 1862 in this particular uh, starting off point. So we're gonna go knight f3, uh, d5. Let's go for c4 for this kind of ready opening, ready gambit here. If black takes the pawn, we'll just go e3 or e4 and get the pawn back pretty soon. Um, other options, as we've seen in some other games, opponents might play c6. There's e6. d4 turns into a bit of a Benoni. Um, there's a couple different moves that black will typically consider in this situation here, but we're going to go ahead and see what their option or what their choice is going to be. Seems like the opponent's already thinking a little bit, which is well, which is good for us. Not that there's really any danger or anything like that in this position. Just yet, at least. Okay, so they do go for c6. This is a bit more of the uh, kind of slavish uh, setup here, where they would go uh, d5, c6. So I'm going to go ahead and play g3 and go for the fianchetto, looking to put some pressure on the center. Of course, there's other ways to play here as well. You could play e3, you could play d4 and go into a normal slav. Um, so I'm just going to I'm going to go with this route, though, since this is uh, kind of the typical... Uh, one of the typical ideas for this opening setup. Okay, so black goes for g6. There is an interesting move that, um, that's available in this position after g6. So black's idea is if I just castle, black plays bishop g7, they get castled. It might turn into a, uh, if I play d4 at some point, um, it might turn into a bit of a, um, what's the word? Um, kind of a, not exactly King's Indian, but like a Grunfeld sort of where they have d5, but they also just have c6 defending it. Um, there is this option here with queen a4, which looks a little bit weird, but the idea behind queen a4 is that we're pinning the c6 pawn, and if black continues just doing normal development like bishop g7, we'll take on d5, and black will have to take back with the knight or the queen, and then we'll be able to have two pawns in the center after that. Now, of course, if we go queen d7, black could play knight d7, but then you actually still go for the capture here, and the issue ends up being that after black takes back with the pawn, the knight on d7 is a little bit misplaced in that kind of setup, I'd say. Um, so we're going to go for this idea here. There are, of course, other moves that work here as well. b3 is playable. Like I said, e, um, d4 and castle, those are fine as well. I'm going to go for this option, though, because it does have this kind of, um, I would say, like a positional threat of taking on d5 here through the pin. Now, of course, if black takes on c4, we'll just take back with the queen. And again, we have two central pawns versus one central pawn. So a lot of the times this ready opening where you go knight f3 and c4, a lot of this is geared towards trying to um, essentially like uh, get two pawns in the center at some point. But usually it takes, you know, it, it happens a little later on. So see, this opponent does play bishop g7. We are going to make the trade on d5, like we said. And either the queen or the knight will take back, and then again we'll have the two um, the two pawns that'll push. So if the queen takes knight c3, if the knight takes here, uh, could go e4 right away. Um, could also go d4 and then e4 later. That's also fine. If I go e4 right away, knight b6, queen here. Maybe then black plays e5, and it's hard to get in d4. Um, so I don't know if I, I... I do have to consider that black might play e5 pretty soon anyways. If I castle, black plays e5, and it's hard to get in the move d4. At least if I want to have, again, two pawns in the center. So I think I'm just going to go with d4 first. d4, the knight could move, hit the queen, and also open up the attack on the d4 pawn. But in that kind of situation, maybe I just... Um, I could just go queen d1 and protect the pawn with my extra space. That's pretty nice. Uh, another option is to um, is to actually, after knight b6, just go queen c2, allow black to win the pawn, but then I'll have the bishop pair and he'll have weak, dark, um, weak king side dark squares. So I'm leaning towards d4 only because I don't really want to let him play e5. So e4, knight b6, move e5 is also another uh, problem. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go d4 here. And then probably play something like uh, e4 next. e4, knight moves, queen d1, protect the pawn. 
knight b6, I also have queen b4, but then knight a6, and I start getting chased around, so probably going to go back to d1. Like I said, maybe c2 if I feel like um, I can give up the d4 pawn and use the bishop here effectively. But at least at the very least, even if I go back to b, uh, even if I go back to d1, I've got extra space in the center, and I have the two pawns that can move uh, forward here. So that's pretty good here. So if black castles, I'll probably castle first. I'd say. Um, I don't know. Maybe I would just play e4. Maybe e4 right away after castling is is a bit preferable. If he goes bishop f5, okay. I was gonna say if he goes bishop f5 to try to stop e4. Um. I can do, I could do knight to d2, threatening e4, because of the fork. I don't know if I really want to go knight c3 necessarily, because first of all, it's not threatening e4. He could take my knight and then take the pawn. The other thing with knight c3 is that black might trade the knights, and then down the road, he'll play something like c5, and he'll have this kind of Grunfeld setup with c5 and knight c6 attacking my center. Um, I could also just castle. If I go knight to d2, knight to b6, and then this pawn is in a little bit of a tricky uh, tricky spot, I'd say. Yeah, I might actually just castle here first. Um, there's also ideas of moving the knight and playing e4, so let's just let's just castle first, I think. Just get out of the center. Probably play rook d1 at some point. Maybe it's also rook e1 and e4. That's also an idea. Um, I don't necessarily want the knight to be on the d2 square. Because it does block in my bishop that's on c1. So even if I played this threatening e4, if he just played knight f6, for example, um, then my bishop on my knight on d2 looks a little bit weird um, in that situation. So I'm gonna go, I think I'll just go rook e1. If he goes bishop e4, then knight d2, and then the bishop will have to figure out what it's doing. So let's go rook e1, threatening e4. If he goes knight b6, I'll still probably just go back to d1 with e4 being the idea still. So this is the idea. If he does move the knight back to f6 to stop it, then instead of going to d2, I'll be able to go to c3, which is just a uh, just a superior square for the knight, essentially. If he ever plays the move b5, I'll probably again just go back to d1 here. There's not really a great square otherwise. I guess b5, maybe I'd go to b3. Maybe that's a little better than, than d1. Um, the reason I wouldn't go to b3 here after, okay, he goes knight of six. So like I said, he's trying to stop the move e4, but now that he's moved the knight, I can play knight c3, um, easier, I would say. Um, knight c3, he plays knight e4. I guess that's maybe an option. Um, another thought here could be queen b3, just to kind of see what he does to protect the pawn. I might actually play that before I do knight c3, because if I go knight c3, there's knight e4. I would like to play things like knight h4, opening up the attack here and hitting the bishop on f5. But then he would just take on c3 um, and then move the bishop away. If I go queen b3 first, he protects this, then knight c3. The difference is knight takes c3 wouldn't be a threat. I could follow up with knight takes f5 maybe at that point. So my queen's also not really necessarily doing much on a4. Uh, knight c3, knight e4. Yeah, so let's kind of, let's poke around a little bit with queen b3 first. d4 is protected, so I'm not worried about that. I want to see how he defends this uh, this this threat here. If he goes b6, then I'll have ideas of knight e5 later, attacking the pawn on c6. If he goes queen c7, there's bishop f4. Probably his best move is queen b6, now that I, now that I look at it a little more. And that could actually be a little bit annoying. Usually in those situations, you don't want to take on b6 because you open up the a-file and um, you give black, uh, even though you give black doubled pawns, he is able to push those pawns to gain space. So he does play queen b6, so that's probably a little bit of a mistake on my part, I'd say. I don't really want to let him take me because I'd get doubled isolated b-pawns, which can be okay, I'd say, if I'm able to play b4 and b5. But um, there's really no guarantee that that could happen. Like if I go knight c3, take, take, he can just move the knight b4, a6, for example, and um, I can't get in the move b5. But maybe, oops, take there. Probably it'd still go knight e4, though, which is a little annoying. 
But then Knight H4 actually is fine. Knight H4 looks fine there. Yeah, I think Knight H4 would be fine in that situation. So I'm trying to see if I have the time after take, take, Knight D7. I guess if he goes Knight D7 or Knight A6, I do get an E4. Uh, if he tries to stop this or moves the bishop away, then I go B4, and I do actually get an B5. He essentially, as soon as he takes on B3, he needs, uh, he needs two moves to move the knight and play a6. If he doesn't do that, I'll be able to play like b4, b5, and um, trade off my double pawns. So I think it does actually work out for me to play knight e4. If I go, or sorry, knight c3, I mean. If I go knight c3, he goes knight e4. I guess I still have knight h4 opening up the attack on the, on the knight on e4 there. If I go knight c3 and he goes bishop e6, I might actually just go back to c2. So I think I... I guess the other thing is if I go knight c3 and he takes, takes, there's knight a6 maybe? But then again, I have e4 or even knight e5, and this pawn on b7 would be uh, overwork protecting the knight in the c6 pawn. So I think I am actually, it might seem a little surprising to do this, I'd say, but I think I am actually going to uh, knight c3, take, take, knight a6, e4, bishop moves. I don't know. I'm not... I'm not 100% sure on that situation specifically. I'm not 100% sure. I could, if I want to avoid all of this, play a little bit of a weird looking move, queen a3, attacking this pawn, and then still go for knight c3, e4, um, stuff like that. Queen a3 is not a, not a bad idea. I'm kind of curious how he guards the pawn. If he goes rook e8, then I'd still just go knight c3, I think. The question is, do I want to allow him to take b3? Do I have time to push the pawn? I don't know if I do. I don't actually know if I do. So, I'm leaning towards queen a3 here. I'm also thinking quite a lot here. I think I'm just going to go with queen a3. Um, this is definitely not my first instinct here. I do kind of lean towards knight c3, but we'll probably look at that after the game's over. Um, just to see if we have the uh, the time to get that in. We just thought for about three minutes on this one move, which is a long time for a 15-minute game. Um, but okay, so queen a3, this is potentially an idea, or at the very least, just knight c3 and e4. Maybe also, now that my pawn's protected on b2, I can develop this bishop easier without needing to worry about queen takes b2 ideas. Knight c3, knight a4, get the queen, and knight c5 is an option. And knight c3 and e4 is kind of my, um, the main thing I'm leaning towards, just doing quickly here. He could go bishop e4 or g4, threatening to take the knight and then the pawn. Uh, but he can't really do that yet, because he has to solve this pawn problem first, I'd say. If he goes bishop g4, I might just, I might just grab the pawn. He'd have to give up the bishop uh, to get d4, but then I'd have the bishop pair, which is pretty good. So this is already a little bit of a threat. If he does let me capture it for free, he will have compensation. If he plays like knight d7, I take the pawn. Um, he goes rook e8, I move away somewhere. He has compensation, but as soon as I develop my pieces, I should be I should be better there, I think. So I'm anticipating him just playing rook e8, probably. Knight d5 doesn't work because I'll play e knight d5, e4, knight b4, going for the fork. Could be interesting. I take the bishop, he makes the fork, I go here, he takes on a1, I go b3, and the knight's trapped. So I might actually get two pieces for the rook in that case. Um, so I don't think this works. Queen c7 walks into bishop f4. That seems useful for me. So I'm leaning, I'm thinking he'll play rook e8. And then I'll go knight c3. I think that's my idea. And then still just working for e4. Black has a little bit of a lead in development with three minor pieces plus uh, plus the queen versus my two minor pieces and queen. But I do have the center space advantage. And especially if I can play e4 um, with the knight on c3, that's going to be pretty good uh, position for, for me here. Okay, so he does play rook e8. Even though rook e8 does defend the threat and doesn't lose material, 
I feel like there's probably something better he could do, quite honestly. It feels a little bit slow. Um, so I think I'm just going to go knight c3. I think that's my just idea here. e4 is the idea. If he goes knight e4, like I said, maybe knight h4. I'd have to do a little calculation there. But I don't really want to take on e4, let the bishop take back, and then kind of block out my uh, my g2 bishop. So if he goes knight e4, I'm leaning towards knight h4. But then bishop takes d4 is a little tricky. I think it's fine, because I can just... Um, he's threatening bishop takes f2. I think I could take on e4 with the knight. Bishop takes, bishop takes, he takes f2, king f1, and I take back on e1 with the queen, or sorry, with the king. And I think I get two minor pieces for the rook. Okay, so he does play knight e4, so we have to kind of put in our calculation hat, so to speak. If he takes on c3 after knight h4, I'll just take back with the pawn. I think I just kind of have to accept that. And then he'll probably move the bishop, and I'll play e4. I'll get the space advantage. Um, he will be able to maybe, you know, play e5 and hit the center, but I think that's... I don't know. That's kind of the main idea I'm leaning towards. I guess another option here, which I didn't really... I'm looking at now. Maybe knight a4, getting the knight off of c3 so he can't take it. The queen moves away somewhere. Maybe queen a5 or, or queen a6 or something. And then knight h4 um, is an interesting option. Because then I'm threatening to take the bishop as well as threatening the knight if the bishop moves away. So knight here, queen moves, knight h4. He takes on d4... I think I have e3, bishop moves, and then g4 maybe? But that gets very messy, I'd say. That gets very, very messy. So is it knight h4 or knight a4? Um, I think if I do anything else, we're just letting him take and play bishop e4. And I don't really want to let him get into that position, I don't think. If I take here and he takes back, there's not a great discovered you know, place to move the knight. So knight a4 and knight h4... Or knight h4 right away. I think I'm going to go knight a4. I don't think I'm missing anything. If he goes queen a5, I can play b4 if I need to. Queen a6, I can just play uh, knight h4 like I planned on doing. Knight a4, queen a6. I mean, at the very least, I could also just play maybe e3. But then b5 is a bit annoying, for sure. b5 would actually probably lose me material. So knight a4, queen a6. Um, knight a4, queen a6. If this knight wasn't here, I could play g4. And then... He'd uh, have the bishop be overworked. I might just be like overcomplicating things here, quite honestly. Knight a4, queen a6, knight h4. I don't know if that really. I think I'll just. I'm leaning back towards knight h4. If bishop takes, I'll take on e4. If, uh, if knight takes c3, I'll take back with the pawn, and then I'll play e4 pretty soon. I think that's what I'll do here. Again, I have to just play quicker. I also thought for another three minutes on that move, so... He can play queen takes d4, and that protects the knight. But I think there's probably uh, just like bishop e3. Um, I'd pick up f5. He'd have to take back with the pawn. He, he does technically win a pawn in that position, but um, it just feels like a very, um, what's the word? It feels like a very uh, risky way of doing things, I'd say. I'm thinking that probably his best way to play is to take on c3. Well, actually, if he takes on c3, maybe I take on f5. He takes on e2 with check, rook takes, pawn takes, maybe rook takes e7 at the end of that. Um... But then I, I end up with this isolated pawn. He ends up with an open king. It's that's it's a mess. That's a messy position. I don't think it needs to be messy here. I think if he takes, I'll probably just take back with the pawn and then play e4. And I just have the center space advantage with not much um with not much concern. I'd say that's probably just the safer way of doing things. 
If bishop takes, I'm still going to do knight takes e4, bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes e2, or f2, king f1, take, take, queen check. Ugh, that gets really, that also gets really messy now that I, now that I see that. Yeah, this actually looks a lot messier than I thought at first. Hmm. Yeah, this could get tricky. Bishop takes here, knight takes. Yeah, this could get this could get messy. I think that this is actually now that I'm looking at it more, I think this is probably the best move to play. Bishop takes d4. He's threatening bishop takes f2 and maybe bishop takes c3 or knight takes c3. So bishop takes d4. If I play knight takes e4, he takes it, I take, he takes, I move, he takes, takes, queen g1 check, king d2, queen takes h2. I am protecting g3 with my queen at the moment. Um, my king is very much exposed. I probably have to play king c2 and just run away. And it looks like he's going for it. So, I mean, you know, props to him for, for going for this. I, I, I think it might work. Um... But I need to I need to calculate here now. So e3 is not an option because I think he just plays bishop takes c3, knight takes or pawn takes c3, and I'm simply down a pawn. I'm down a pawn, but I do have the bishop pair, which is not and I'm also probably gonna get both bishops because he can't really protect everything. E3 actually will play bishop c5. That 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 would actually that would actually spoil uh you know change everything, I think. So I can't do that. Bishop takes e4. Does he take on c3 first? Maybe he takes on c3 first, and then after, and he's hitting the rook, and then once I take back, he takes e4. That's not terrible, I'd say, if this if this route happened, because I have bishop h6 threatening mate. He has to play f6 or e5, and I do um we do have opposite color bishops, and it's a bit messy. But I am down a pawn, which is not um which is not necessarily ideal. So knight takes e4, bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes f2, king g1, bishop takes, king takes, queen check, king d2, rook d8, king c2. I don't think he has another check yet. He probably takes on h2, though, and that looks very messy. I probably have to swing the queen over to f3 and then develop very quickly. I do have the knight, bishop, and I have two bishops and a knight plus a rook versus the two rooks and the knight. I think I'm okay there. But he does get a couple of pawns for the exchange, which is the, um... All right, sorry, not even a couple of pawns for the exchange. He's going to have, um... It's a rook versus two minor pieces, but he'll have a couple of pawns. So yeah, that looks messy, but I think I kind of just have to go for it. I don't think I'm missing anything. I think I just have to go for it here. He'll probably take on e4. If I had taken on f5 first, he would simply just, uh, yeah, so he's going for it. I have to go king f1 to protect the rook. If I go king g1, so the uh, the problem is if, I, if he takes king g2, if I go king g2, takes bishop e3, hitting the queen and the bishop, and blocking off f2, he can go like queen a5 or queen b4, and that protects the bishop. And that's not so good. So I think I have to go king f1. He'll take, I take, he checks, I move. I do have bishop d3. Actually, I was kind of missing that in the calculation. But bishop does actually protect the d-file pretty well. So I'm anticipating he takes, I take. He'll get the check and pick up the pawn. I have to go to d2, which is super scary. If he goes rook d8, I have just bishop e3. If he goes check here, check, bishop, I can also play bishop d3, I think. Or king c2 maybe is maybe that's fine. He'll get the pawn, and then I'll probably just develop bishop f4 or something like that. He also has to be a little careful. Once he takes on h2, he has to be careful the queen doesn't get trapped um, in certain uh, circumstances. So this is probably his best move. If he doesn't make this move, yeah, I mean he has to make this. And I have to move the king, so no other option. Queen check here, I have queen d3 or bishop d3. My knight's protected, so really the only spot he might have a tactic is this bishop. 
If he checks, oh, okay, if, I'm sorry. If he checks, I can't go king c2 because queen d1. I mean, maybe I can go to b1 there, but then he takes e2. I don't think that's that good. I think if he checks, okay, he does take here. I think I'm going to play, I can't go king c2 because he'll take e2. I think I'm going to lean towards queen f3. I kind of want the queen on this side of the board, move the king here, and then develop the bishop somewhere. Yeah, this might look really weird pretty soon, but I think queen f3 is fine. I want the queen on this side so I can protect this and maybe have rook h1. Queen h3 right now, if I get two free moves in, rook h1 will trap the queen. So he has to be uh, he has to be a bit careful about that. I might also be able to do like move, move, rook f1 and um, attack. Or somehow get the bishop to c4 and attack. So I think queen f3 is fine. I think this is okay. It also protects the uh, the e2 pawn. So my pawns are protected. The queen is kind of locked out of the game for the moment. If he plays queen h3, I get a free move to develop pretty much. Or move my king and develop the bishop. So the thing is, he does have three pawns for the two minor pieces for the rook. So like technically black is up two points here. But there's really only one open file. So the rook's not that useful. And if I can get king c2, bishop f4, rook h1, or or bishop e3, bishop d2, something like that, rook f1, rook h1, um, I'm going to be able to turn the game around with an attack on the king side. Um, now I am down like about two and a half minutes here, so i got to play a bit quicker for sure. I'm not really worried about knight e5, because I think I just play queen f4. So I think I can play king c2, knight e5, queen f4, and then once the knight moves away somewhere, then I can move the bishop and play rook h2. I get, actually, now that I say that, king c2, knight e5, queen here, he takes on, he does take on e2. So I, I also have just queen g2. Actually, now that I say that, queen g2 just completely snuffing out the queen. Again, I am down a couple pawns, but... Mm. So king here, knight e5, maybe queen g2 then, I guess is fine. I don't want to trade the queens just yet, I would say, because I kind of want to maybe attack. Yeah, I think I'm going to go, does he have, if I go king c2, does he have f5? I feel like that would just be risky for him. Like, at the very least, bishop, no, bishop d5 wouldn't work. I could just go bishop d3. Uh, maybe f5 is an issue if I move the king. King c2, f5. That could be a little bit annoying. Actually, king c2, f5. I still play queen g2 and force the, tra the trade at the very least, right? I think that should be okay. Yeah, I think we're going to go for this. So my idea is just to move the bishop and play rook h1 or rook f1. If he plays some slow move, that's that's 100%. Probably bishop f4 to stop knight e5 and then rook h1. If he does any of this, I'll play queen g2 and uh, enforce the queen trade. This endgame, I'm not sure if it's that great for me, quite honestly, though. Because, again, he has three pawns for the... Uh, he, he's up three pawns. But I have two minor pieces versus a rook. That's a really weird material imbalance. Which I'm not 100% sure about. I feel like I should be better because there's really only one open file for the rook to use. And the minor pieces tend to outperform the rook when there's not a lot of open files. Um... But quite honestly, I'm not 100% sure on uh, this situation here. If he goes knight c5, I have maybe bishop f4. Okay, he does play knight e5. I think I have to go queen g2. I have to pretty much protect this pawn. I can't go here and let this kind of stuff happen. That would just be really bad. Queen e3 just looks really weird to blockade the um, the pawn and also block the bishop. So I think I, I think I probably should just force the queen trade here. Um, and I probably have to take back with the bishop, I think. Because if I take with the knight f5, 
Bishop F3. I guess that's maybe okay, but I think I have to take back with the bishop probably. That's that's what I'm leaning towards. He's got to trade queens. I guess knight g4 technically works, but I'm going to take back with the bishop. Then I can play knight f3 soon and offer a trade of uh, knights maybe. Bishop f4 developing with tempo is also uh, definitely an idea. So if he goes like rook d8, bishop f4 probably first. Knight c4, maybe king c3 to hit the knight. I could also go b3 and bishop b2. That's not a bad diagonal for the um, for the bishop to be on. But then he might have knight g4 to e3. That, that e3 square could be pretty strong if I'm not careful. I wish this pawn on g3 was over on f2. Or I wish this pawn was over on e2. Or sorry, f2. I wish these pawns were a little more together here. But it's a very interesting position. Because again, he's up a couple pawns. But I do have the two minor pieces versus the rook. Okay, so he goes rook d8. So bishop f4, knight c4, b3, knight a3, check, king b2, knight b5. And then knight maybe knight f3. I don't know exactly how to evaluate this necessarily. I don't know if I want to trade a pair of rooks. I, I feel like I don't want to trade a pair of rooks. But I'm honestly not 100% sure. I think I'll start off maybe with knight f3. But then maybe knight g4 is just annoying. Um, uh, whatever I do, I have to play faster. Okay, we're going to hit this first. If he goes knight c4, king c3, I think. I need to get the rook in the game. like Whether it's going to c1 or... Or f1 or something like that. Probably knight c4. King c3 is an idea to hit the knight. I wouldn't mind if he played e5 at some point. Because then bishop g5. And I could maybe put the bishop on f6 and kind of freeze his pawns. That would be um, that would be okay for me. But if he plays f6 first at some point. Then I have to watch out for g5. So probably to have to play knight f3. Um, e5. Yeah, the, knight, the, the bishop's not having a great spot in those situations. But maybe I can play g4, g5, and look to undermine the pawns in the center. For that reason, maybe the bishop is better on b2, but I was always worried about the, the e3 square. So he does go here. If I go b3, knight a3 check, king b2, he can't go to d2 yet, knight b5. I don't know how I, I don't like my king going away from the center. It feels a little weird. I think I'm gonna get the bishop out, or sorry, I'm gonna get the um, the rook out, and then I might even it might look a little weird, but I might even tuck the bishop back on c1, and then play b3 um, after that and put the bishop back on b2. That's gonna look weird. If he plays e5, I have bishop g5 and locking in the f6 square, which I think is good. Maybe not immediately. I'd have to deal with knight e3 first. e5 here. If he does f6, I have rook takes f6, which looks okay. f6 is probably his best move, but then I think I'll still just go bishop c1. And you can't go e5 because I have rook takes f6. So f6, bishop c1, and then b3. I think against a lot of what he's going to do, I'll probably just go bishop c1 and b3. I don't really want to let him play knight a3 check, and I might... Okay, so let's play f6. I'm, I have to move the bishop because g5 is a big threat, so let's move away. If he goes e5, like I said, I have this. g5, I have knight f5, which looks okay. Um, b3 is my next move, probably. The, the big thing I did here was, even though I moved the bishop out and put it back, I got the rook developed. My rook's not stuck on a1 anymore. That's a... Um, I think that's a big improvement. Okay, so he's ready to play like e5 at some point. I'm going to go b3. I think that's my um, my idea here. And then after knight e5, g4 is also an option, actually. And then playing g5. But yeah, whatever I do, i got to be a lot faster. Okay, we gotta we got to just make moves here. If knight e5, I might play bishop h3 to keep the knight off g4, maybe. Knight e5 also blocks the e-pawn, so I'm not actually too concerned about that. 
he'll probably move the knight back to one of these squares. That's probably the better um, the better option, I think. Probably knight d6, because he could go into um, b5 and d4 later. Knight d6, maybe a4, maybe. And then I can play bishop e3 and maybe another pawn. Just kind of poke around on the queen side. These pawns, I am kind of putting pressure over with the bishop, so it's not easy to play b6 or c5. Not easy to do that. Okay, he goes knight b6. Um, I could play e4 and block the knight out. It does block my bishop, but I can always reroute the bishop. I can move this and eventually get the bishop maybe over to c4 um, at some point. I'm, an I'm anticipating e5. And my, my bishop is blocked for sure, but maybe g4, g5, and I can um, break open the, uh, take, kind of break the pawn chain apart maybe. e5, maybe also bishop e3, because now there's no knight d5 to worry about. So bishop e3 looks fine. I don't want to really let him play f5, so I don't necessarily want to play like knight f3 and let f5 happen. It'd probably be smart for him to double up, but I think I'm leaning towards a4, a5, and maybe looking to pick up the pawn here. I can always play knight f3 if I need to, to cover the second rank. And I'll also have maybe like putting the bishop on f1 to cover d3. So I want to make sure I control all of these, um, all of these like second rank uh, stuff. Let's, uh, let's get out from behind the pull in here and just poke the poke the rook first. If he goes to c5, I can actually go bishop, if he goes to d6, I actually have bishop c5, pushing him back to d8. Yeah, that actually looks pretty reasonable. And I'm also stopping f5 with my bishop now. Okay, he goes back to d8. Let's go a4, I think that's... Uh, a4 with the idea of a5 and maybe pick up the a7 pawn if he's not careful. It's a very weird looking position, but my pieces are sufficiently stopping what I think is his main plan. I think he wants to play f5, but it's just not that easy to do it. If he plays f5 right now, and I take a knight d5, that's a little tricky. But if he goes f5, I'll probably play a5 first to make the knight move, then take, so that he doesn't have knight d5. I don't really want to let the knight come to d5. Now, it, it, also another nice thing is we've caught up on time here. We're actually one second ahead at this point. So, yeah, this has been a really, really crazy end game, I'd say. Um, really crazy game overall, especially when we, uh, with this like material of balance situation being very interesting. Okay, goes to c8. Um, knight d6 is going to be a little annoying because this pawn is going to need protection. I could play bishop take c8, rook take c8, and pick up the pawn. I might actually do that here. Because my bishop isn't really doing much otherwise, quite honestly. And then I can always play bishop b6 and prevent him from doubling. I'm also still stopping f5. If he tries to play c5, my bishop's not trapped. I can play bishop b6 and a5. Okay, so I'm going to play bishop b6, I think. I also want to stop c, uh, c5, so once the rook moves, I'll play like b4. And he doesn't really have any entry points, which is uh, which is pretty important. b4, c5 is actually really weird. b4, c5, because if the pawn takes, then he has like rook d4. If the bishop takes, he has b6. So that, that actually is very weird. I'm going to go knight f3, actually, now that I think about that a little more. I want to go knight d2 to c4, and that will still kind of tie him down to protecting the pawn. He still can't play f5, because I'll, I'll take the pawn, and you know, I'll take there and take here. So knight d2 to c4 would be just a better location than h4. h4 is just kind of, you know, off on the side of the board, not doing a ton. It's stopping f5, but that's really about it. If the knight can work its way to c4, and then put the bishop on... Okay, so he's playing that. Um... I think I have to go knight d2. I don't want to let him play c4. I don't want to let him open the position up. I'm still stopping the doubling. If he goes rook c6, I have bishop a5 to c3, and then knight c4. So even if he gets doubled, he doesn't have much of an invasion spot. Okay, bishop a5. 
I could have also done pawn to a5, but I feel like the bishop could get stuck there almost. So I think putting the bishop back on c3, this also prevents the f5 ideas, which is one of the things he wants to work towards. So instead of being down three pawns, I'm only down two pawns. It does look like he's going to work for maybe pushing on the king side here. So I'm going to go knight c4. Knight c4, rook d4 though. Maybe bishop c3 first. If he does get g5 and h4, I will play, like, if he plays g5, I'll probably actually, I might even just go back over to, if I go over to f3 and he goes c4, I do have b4 there, though, which looks fine. I'm also maybe threatening bishop takes e5, pawn takes, knight takes in some situations to, um, to pick up two pawns and trade down into a rook game. But really, this is just targeted to stop this. If he goes king g6, I do maybe have bishop takes e5. Pawn takes, knight takes. Okay, we don't want to let him open the file, so I think b4 is the way to go. It does give him this passed pawn I have to be a bit careful about, but it also maybe lets me start pushing my pawns here. He does get rook d3, which is actually a bit tricky. Okay, I think we're going to go a5. If he goes b6, I have b5, actually. B6, B5, Rook moves A6. That'll be very dangerous for him. I'm actually threatening maybe B5 right away. <laughs> if he goes B5, that could be interesting. I'm probably going to play Rook H1 pretty soon. But Rook D3 is now something that... uh Okay, he does play B6. So I think this is a little bit of a mistake. Because now we get this protected pass pawn. I definitely don't want to take there and open up the file. So I play this, hitting the Rook. And now I play... I don't know if I want to take, because then it's going to be easy to win that back, I think. He'll just play, like, rook b7, and I can't really guard it. So I'm going to go a6. And it's not easy to attack the b5 pawn. Uh, okay, he goes knight, rook to d3. He's threatening maybe g4, and then rook takes g3. So that's a little, that's a little tricky, I'd say. But I could maybe just ignore his pawn pushes and go knight d2, he takes g3, I take c4, I have knight takes b6, and a7 is a very big idea. And I think my a6 pawn is just way quicker than what he's got. I think that's going to work for me. Though, of course, with a minute on the clock, you know, crazy things can happen. I think this works good, though. If he goes rook c8, okay, we're going to take here. Oh, hold on. If I take here, rook c8. But then I have a7. And if he takes there, I make the queen. And I think that works fine for me. Yeah, I think that's fine. Rook here, a7. Knight takes b6 is the big threat right now. Okay, I, push, I think I just pushed the pawn. I guess king b3 also works if I want to play it safe. Yeah, king b3 looks fine. <laughs> but let me just calculate here. So a7, if he takes the knight, I promote... Can he get a perpetual check? If he takes here, I can run over to a2, and then rook a3 check, I'll take with the queen. If he takes with the other rook, um, I can run over to... Uh, essentially to b1, and I'll capture on c1 with the rook. So I have these two spots covered. Um, I think we just push. If he goes rook a8, I'll play rook a1, and then knight takes b6 is kind of unstoppable. But I also have knight takes e5, bishop takes e5 in some situations here. If he's, uh... But I really don't think that's, that's really not the main plan I'd go with. The threat right now isn't really to take this yet, because rook takes c3 is annoying, but the threat is actually kind of just rook a1, or king b3. Actually, yeah, rook, probably just rook a1. Rook a1 takes, promote. Um, oh, actually, no. Rook a1 doesn't work. I don't think. Actually, yeah, it does. I'm sorry. Rook a1, he takes, I promote, he takes this way. I can go to d1. Going to b2 would actually be a mistake because I do get perpetual check there. But I go to d1. Um, okay, so knight takes here is not, is not the issue. If I go rook here, h3, promote, take, take, h2, that's actually very bad now that I look at it. Mm. 
This gets a little tricky. I'm way down on time. Rook a1, h3. Promote, take, take, h2. All right, we're going to go with this. I'll just keep the knight in place. If h3 and h2, I'll have to play rook h1 probably at the right time. All right, this will look a little weird. I'm threatening to promote right now. If he plays h2, then I go back over this way, actually. And then he has rook h3, though. Ooh. He's threatening rook g1. Okay, I have to do this. Rook h3 now, though, messes me up. But then king b4, g... Ooh, man, this gets messy. I do have bishop e1. Knight takes b6. Yeah, this gets... Ooh, man, this gets really, really messy. Um... G4, I think I have to play bishop e1. G3, take, take, knight takes b6. G4, G4, knight takes b6. Rook takes. Okay, he's back to protect. Oh, no. Yeah, that's right. He can actually do this, can he? Um, oh, man, this gets... This is not so great now. I've allowed the pawn here, and I completely forgot that I can't. He can just stop it now. Okay, I think we have to go for this. And then move the knight. If he goes here, I have to play bishop e1, I think. And then I have to give the bishop up and then push here. If I push and then bishop e1, I guess that's probably okay too. Okay, I think I push. If he pushes, I take... Okay, I have to go bishop e1 now. If g3, I can give it up, take here, and then my king should walk up the board, I think. Oh, man, really in that position, though, it's not clear whatsoever. It's really not clear here. I think I have to take on g3. Oh, if I had thought about it, maybe king here, g3, knight e... Then g2 and rook takes c3, yeah. I don't know. I think I have to take this. I think I have to take on h2. If I go king c5, he can play rook h3 and hold on to the pawn, maybe? I kind of want to get the pawn and then win the rook. I think I will be able to win this rook. Rook g4, king c5... Rook takes e4, king c6. It may end up in a position where he has to give the rook up for uh, the pawn. If I go rook e2, he has f5, which is really annoying. I think I have to do this. He'll get the pawn. I'll go king c6. If he gives the rook up, I'll have a, a rook and knight versus two pawns. This will probably, quite honestly, end up being a draw. Assuming that I'm not like completely missing something here. Okay, I, can't, I just I can't. I can't take so much time here. Rook b8, I can move king c7, I think. If I go b7, he has rook, b, uh, rook c4 check, which is not so good. I think king c7 is the move. If he tries not giving up the rook for the knight, it could be very dangerous for him, actually. Like, yeah, I may... Oh, I thought I would have rook knight e7 to c6, but knight e7, he has rook f7. I wonder if I... Uh, I have to play faster, for sure. If I go here... Oh, no. Oh, I just took too long to make the move. Um, oh, that's a bit rough. So we end up losing this particular game. Um... I'm really curious how this one, what the evaluation was here. I'm really curious what it was. Okay, well, let's go ahead and analyze this game. I needed to play rook c2 faster and just push the pawn. Um, if I if I do rook c2 and he goes f5, b7, I could. the thing is I was going to work for doing knight b6 to c8 and promote. I think that works for me. But if I go rook c2, b7... Like f5, b7. He could always check here, give it up, and then, then again, the two pawns are going to be 
probably again drawish. Okay, so we end up uh, we end up losing that game. So first loss of the rapid games here, but definitely an interesting game. I don't think I'm I I don't think I'm winning. I don't think I'm losing. I think it's probably drawish, but we'll get to that point in the analysis. So uh, okay, go. So game goes knight f3 d5. I think the opening uh, goes pretty well. Um, queen a4 is this interesting idea with now pawn takes d5. He has to take back with the knight or the queen. Now I do get the pawn in the center, which is pretty nice. He stops e4. Castle, castle, rook e1, going for e4 again. Knight f6, knight c. Um, I did queen b3. I think this is really, thinking back on it, it's probably not the best move. I probably should just go knight c3. He goes knight e4. And then probably go for a knight h4 um, at this point. I'm not really entirely sure why I was, you know, not happy about this kind of structure. Um, I could just go e4 here, for example. Um, I could have achieved this a lot earlier in the game. I'm not really sure why I didn't go for that. I was leaning towards, like, all these tactical ideas of, like, I wanted to go knight c3 and knight h4 and, like, win material. But... Really, just it just makes much more sense to play simple here. Queen b3, queen b6 is a good response. Um, I was thinking about knight c3, but I wasn't sure about this kind of... I wasn't sure about this move here, because uh, knight b4 to c2 and d3 is coming. Bishop takes b3 is an idea. I wasn't 100% sure about this position, so I, I didn't go for that. I did queen a3, rook e8, knight c3, knight e4. And this is where I played knight h4, and this is where it got, like I said, very messy. Thinking back on it, I really probably shouldn't go for this. Maybe the better way to do things is just, um, maybe just develop at this point. Maybe bishop f4. Bishop takes d4 doesn't really work, because after take, take, we can play, um, something like rook, or probably take e4 first. Take, take, rook e1. And he's going to have trouble protecting the bishop here. Queen c4, we play, oops. Queen c4, we have uh, b3, queen e6, f3, e4, you know, black's in a little bit of trouble there, maybe, or maybe even g4. And yeah, he's going to end up losing the um, the bishop pretty soon. Um, yeah, I was, I was kind of enamored in a sense by this knight h4 idea. But keep in mind, I could have done this a lot earlier without all the complications. So the fact that I even allowed these complications is not so great. Um, and we get into this position here, king f1, take, take, check here, takes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I Like I said, I really had uh, trouble evaluating this in game here. I do think if I get to trade the queens off, I should be fine. But like I said, he still has three extra pawns here. I mean, it's not a, it's not a simple in game by any means. Um, rook f1, bishop c1, b3. I feel like we start kind of outplaying him here. We are able to win the um, to win the pawn here on a7, and then we hit the rook here, and then knight f3. Maybe I should have played bishop c5 myself just to take away those um, those pawn pushes, so he doesn't get to open up, open up any files. But I, like even here, I think like we're fine. Bishop here, bishop c3, knight f3. Maybe we shouldn't allow him to play c4. Maybe knight c4 is the better move. He can't play h4 yet, because I'll just trade and win the pawn. Oh, knight c4 is also going for the f5 square. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, at the very least, an improvement for sure. Knight f3 allows c4, and then rook a6. I think he messes up here, though, because b5 and a6 looks really good. Um... I played knight d2, he took g3, take on c4, rook c8. Yeah, I think a7, maybe a7 is not the move. Maybe it is just king b3 right away. h4. Uh, I want to take here, but again, if I push this, he plays h3, and it's kind of just like the game. Maybe rook c1. Protect the bishop, and now rook knight takes b6 is an idea. That actually looks now... Um, dangerous for him. Knight takes b6. He has h2 still, though, which is really weird. Because if I take rook g1, I do have a7. He makes the queen, or, or he takes my rook and then makes a queen. 
this is a messy position where I have, again, two minor pieces versus a rook. He's up a pawn. I, yeah, very, very weird material imbalances throughout this game. What did I do in the game? I played a7 first. If he had taken on c4, I was planning to promote. He takes here, check here. If he does have the check here, even this, actually, I'm not even sure if this is winning for me because he has the, um, you know, he has the pawns that are coming down the board. If I'm not careful, the two pawns will actually beat me alone. Maybe he, like, moves the king. Well, he can't move the king there because then I would take and go behind the pawn. Maybe this. And am I am I winning this? I I don't know. If he's able to trade off this stuff in a moment, he'll be up a pawn. Maybe though, maybe I could do something like this, which is sneaky. Oops, sorry, definitely not that. Let's go stop the pawn. I'll be win I'd be winning that pawn uh, pawn end game. Yeah, it's really hard to calculate all of this during the um with like a minute on the clock for sure. So okay, after um B a7, h4, king b3. Maybe not king b3. Maybe maybe I have to move the king. Maybe king b2. King b2 now because now rook takes c3 is not a, uh, not a check. This is now a threat. If he pushes h3 like in the game. I take this. If he takes here, it's not a check is the important point, and I get to promote. Whereas in the game, king b3, now if I play knight takes b6, he takes on c3 with check. King here, rook a3. Even this, though, like, I don't know, does, does, this, does this work? And I'm going to promote. But maybe he has this with the idea of taking and then skewering. Um... I don't know. This gets this gets really really messy. Uh, this is definitely a game you'd have to use a computer to analyze for sure. I feel like I, I feel like I'm winning in here. I feel like I'm better, especially with the pawn on a7. But after after rook a1, h2, rook h1, I essentially just waste a move there, and I think I just completely missed that he could go back to a8. I, I think that's really what it was. Um, maybe I do just have to take on b6 and then something like this. This looks good because he can't. If he stop, if he does this, I have um, b6 and b7, which looks good. Maybe instead of rook a3, does he have something else? If he stops here, promoting is not good now because he'll check and pick it up afterwards. If I go here and go for b6, b7, but again, the problem is like, do I have enough time? Can he play like g4? And then if I go b6, g3, g3, g3 there. Maybe after, maybe I have rook takes h2 to pull the rook off of a8, but, oh yeah, this is just a really crazy game. Really, really interesting. Um, yeah, I think I'm wor I'm probably worse at this point, but I think he messes up around here. Like, I don't know if he should play g3, because that allows me to essentially trade off the pawns, which are the really important thing. Maybe instead of doing that, he should start, like, um, maybe, like, walk the king up the board. Uh, or play f5 or something like that. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Was there anything else I could have done? Is there a different knight move, maybe? I feel like this should probably end up being a draw here. This should probably end up being a draw here, I'd imagine. I, I just play too slow. I was going to go rook c2 was my idea. But then maybe he just goes f5, b7. I don't. He can't allow this. If he goes f4, I actually maybe do knight b6 to, to, to c8, which is messy. Or, I mean, if, if I promote, I guess this is probably just... I, I don't, Honestly, I don't even know if this is a draw. Because if anybody's playing for a win, it's probably him. I have to be like very careful with what I do. I mean, this could already be very dangerous just because of the pin. 
Yeah, so this is just a really interesting game. I think I play a bit to, um, how do I say, like, instead of just following, you know, normal ideas here of knight c3 and e4, and, and if he goes knight h4, just playing knight, uh, sorry, if he goes knight e4, just play knight h4, and this should just be a better, at, at least a slightly better position for me. I essentially do the same thing, but just without, like, wasting moves here. Queen b3 to a3, um, and then the difference here is the queen's on b6, which means bishop takes f2 is a, um, is an idea. Um, I mean, maybe I could get away with e3 and queen a4, but uh, like I said during the game, I'm just down a pawn here, which I'm not sure if that's good, but I mean, in the game, it was really complicated as well, so. Anyways, definitely a very interesting game. Um, definitely one that is very um, atypical, I'd say, in the sense of, like, the pawn, uh, sorry, not the pawn, the piece uh, imbalance, or the material imbalance, there you go. The material imbalance being really interesting, having the um, the, the two minor pieces versus the rook and three pawns, but there's no open files and the pieces coordinate pretty well. I feel like we had the better position, but just a very, very interesting game. Time does obviously play a factor in, you know, in rapid games. So I'm not making any mistake or any, not mistakes, um, any excuses or anything like that. My opponent was under the same time pressure that I was, and he was able to um, not lose on time. So very well played game by him. Um, I feel like I was winning in there. Probably going to have to use the computer to double check some of that stuff a bit later. Um, but probably, um, again, just a very interesting game that I hope you guys enjoyed in the video. Um, so that is our first loss in the, in the, you know, in the rapid game playthrough here, trying to work our way up to 2000 and beyond, but we'll get back right, uh, right on track with another game, um, and, you know, uh, in a future day for the video. Uh, again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video, uh, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell notification, and um, you'll get updated when the next video gets posted, which should be pretty soon, I imagine. Okay, hope everybody has a good rest of the day then, and uh, I will see you around in the next video. All right, bye everybody.